Welcome to Raw Perfect Classes. In this video, I will discuss about chapter number two of uh, economics, sectors of the Indian economy. Sectors of uh, the Indian economy. Just a minute. There are three sectors of economy. Comparison of three sectors of economy. Differences between organized and unorganized sectors. Classification of economic activities. These points will be discussed in this chapter. Let us look at these pictures. You will find that people are engaged in various economic activities. Some of these are activities producing goods. Some others are producing services. This is producing services. These are also producing services. These are producing things. These are also using things. So these activities are happening around us every minute even as we speak. How do we understand these activities? One way of doing this is to group them, classify them using some important criteria. These groups are also called sectors. So, first, economic activities. Those activities which generates some income are known as economic activities. They economic activities. Economic activities are those activities which generate the sum income that is known as economic activities. For example, a computer engineer creating software for profit that is making money from his work. So that is the economic activity. A farmer produces uh, a farmer growing the crops and then after growing that crops, farmer goes to market for selling that crop for earning the income, earning the money. That is known also econo <coughs> sorry, <coughs> economic activities. <coughs> there are many kinds of activities which are undertaken by directly using natural resources. For example, cultivation of cotton and it takes place within a crop season for a growth of the cotton plant. We depend mainly but not entirely on the natural factors like rainfall, sunshine, climate. The product of this activity, cotton is a natural product. Similarly, in case an activity like dairy, we are dependent on the biological process of animals and availability of water. The product here is milk, which is natural product. Similarly, minerals ores are also natural products. When we produce a good by exploiting natural sources, that is an activity of primary sector. Why? Why primary? This is because it forms the base for all the other products that we subsequently make since most of the natural products we get are from agriculture, dairy, fishing, forestry. And this sector is also known as agriculture and related sectors. These are the primary sectors. Now next is a secondary sectors. Secondary sectors covers activities in which natural products which are changed into other forms through the ways of manufacturing we associate with industrial activities it is the next step after primary first primary then second primary belongs to agriculture related sector 
second ring belongs to industry for example sugar cane produced by farmers when they are produced by farmers that is they are producing in a primary sector but when sugar cane is used for manufacturing sugar jaggery then they are used in industry in manufacturing companies those sectors are called secondary sector clear yeah? the product which is not produced by nature sugar cane is produced by nature that is known as primary sector but those are produced by human beings that is known as secondary sector the product is not produced by nature but has to be made and therefore some processes of manufacturing is essential this could be in a factory a workshop or at home for example using cotton fiber from the plant we using spin yarn weave cloth using sugar cane as a raw material we make sugar or good we convert earth into bricks use bricks to make houses building since these sectors gradually become associated with different kinds of industries that came up it is called industrial sector after primary secondary there are third category of uh, sector is tertiary sector it is a different from the above these are activities that help in development of primary and secondary sector these activities by themselves do not produce a good but they are an it help or a support for their production or process for example goods which are produced in a primary or secondary sector they would need to be transported by trucks trains and they need to sold in a wholesale retail shops at that time it may be necessary to store these in a go downs we also need to talk to other other on telephone send letters communication borrow money from bank to help the production trade transport the storage communication banking trade are some examples in territory activities since these activities generate services rather than goods territory sectors is also called service sectors so we can say that first sector is primary second secondary third is a service sector service sector secondary primary primary belong to agriculture and related sector secondary belong to industrial factory sector service belong to territory sectors service sector also includes some essential services that may not directly help in production of goods for example teachers doctors those who provide personal services washermen barbers cobblers lawyers lawyers people to do administrative accounting works in recent times certain new services based on the information technology such as internet cafe atm booths call centers software companies these all become important so economic activities do are grouped into three categories they are highly interdependent kon kon uh, which type of uh, sectors first is primary second secondary third tertiary primary belongs to agriculture and other sectors secondary belong to industries where we manufacture things third service sectors tertiary belongs to service sectors now next point is comparing the three sectors now we are going to compare three sectors 
various production activities primary secondary tertiary sector produce very large number of goods and services these sectors have large number of people working in them to produce goods and services what is the next step the next step is to see how much goods and services produced how many people work in each sector in an economy there could be one more sectors which are dominant in the terms of total production and employment while other sectors are relatively small in size next next question is arise how do we count the various goods services know the total production in each sectors as a thousand of economic activities going around in all three sectors it makes it almost impossible to make to take the account of every such activity we check only final goods and services we check only final goods and services for example a farmer who sells wheat to flour meal rupees 20 per kg the mill grinds the wheat and sells the flour to biscuit company for 25 rupees per kg the biscuit company uses the flour and things such as sugar oil to make <coughs> for, uh, make the packets of biscuit it sells the biscuits in market to the consumers for rupees 80 20 rupees per packet biscuits are the final goods goods that reach the consumers why are only final goods and services con- counted in contrast to final goods goods such as wheat wheat flour in this example are the intermediate goods intermediate goods are used up in producing final goods and services the value of final goods already includes the value of all intermediate goods so that are used in making the final good the value of rupees 80 for the biscuits final good already include the value of flour similarly the value of other intermediate goods would have been included so to count the value of flour and wheat separately is therefore not correct because then we would be counting the value of same things a number of times first as wheat then as flour and finally as biscuit the value of final goods and services produced in each sector during a particular year which provides total production of the sector for that year at the sum of production in the three sectors which gives you in domestic gross domestic product of a country gdp gross domestic product of a country it is the value of all finally goods and service produced within a country means gdp means the value of all final goods and services goods and services produced within a country with in a country that is known as gross domestic product gdp shows how big the economy is the value of final goods and services produced in all three sectors during a particular year provides the total production of the sector for that year is called gross domestic product of a country more gdp more bigger the economy of country gdp is more than economy also more bigger if gdp is if gdp is less economy also not less
Now next is point is historical changes in sectors. At the initial stages of development, every sector was most important sector of economic activity in a country. Primary sector is most important sector of economic activity in a country. With the innovation of with the innovation of farming, innovation of farming methods, agriculture sector began to produce much more food than before. People started working in industries. Some people also get involved in transportation. Gradually, secondary sector became most important in economy and providing employment. Different industries, different industries related to food produce food processing, equipments making, textiles coming in large numbers. This lead to start of services such as banking, health, education, etc. The service sector has become the most important sector in terms of total production and it started employing more people. So we can say that over a long time, more than 100 years, especially new methods of manufacturing were produced, introduced, factories came up, started expanding. Those people who had earlier worked on farmer, farms now begun to work in a factories in large numbers. They were forced to do so. You read in history chapters. People began to use many more goods that were produced in factories cheap at a cheap rates. In a secondary sector, gradually became most important in total production and employment. Over a time, a shift had taken place. This means that importance of sector had changed. In the past 100 years, there has been a further shift from secondary to territory sectors. Means primary to secondary shift, then secondary to territory shift. Most important in terms of total production, most of working people are also employed in service sector. This is general pattern which are observed in the developed countries. Now, what's the total production and employment in three sectors in India? Over the years, have there been change similar to the pattern observed for development of the countries? Now, next point is contribution in GDP. What is the contribution of uh, GDP in contribution in GDP in uh, the period of 1973? And uh, 1974, primary sector has contributed maximum to GDP. After 2013-14, when territory sector has contributed maximum share in GDP. Now question is arise, why? There are various factors behind this. Now next point is, what are the factors behind the shift in contribution in GDP? Primary to secondary, secondary to territory. First factor is development of agriculture and industry, which leads to the development of services like uh, transport, trade, storage and banking. Greater development of primary sectors, secondary sectors, they demand more services. That's why they shift in the contribution in GDP. Why are the most of the people employed? In the period during the 1973 and 74, only 40% of 40% is contributed by primary sector in GDP. 40% contributed by primary sector in GDP. And 12% and 48% 12% by secondary, 48% by 
टेरिटरी सेक्टर्स एम्प्लॉयमेंट परसेंट ड्यूरिंग दीरियड नाइनटीन सेवेंटीज टू नाइनटीन सेवेंटी एट टू थाउजेंड सेवनटीन एटीन द प्राइमरी सेक्टर कंटिन्यूज टू लार्जेस्ट एम्प्लॉयर इवन नाउ दिस पोर्शन इज रिमार्केबल फैक्ट अबाउट दैट इंडिया इज दैट वाइल देयर हैज बीन चेंज इन द शेयर ऑफ थ्री सेक्टर्स इन जी डी पी ए सिमिलर शिफ्ट हैज नॉट टेकन प्लेस इन एम्प्लॉयमेंट ग्राफ थ्री शोज दैट इज देयर शेयर ऑफ एम्प्लॉयमेंट इन थ्री सेक्टर्स नाइनटीन सेवेंटी सेवन टू सेवेंटी एट एंड टू थाउजेंड सेवनटीन एटीन द प्राइमरी सेक्टर कंटिन्यूज टू लार्जेस्ट एम्प्लॉयर इवन नाउ एंड दिस शोज द नाइनटीन सेवेंटी थ्री एंड सेवेंटी फोर और टू थाउजेंड थर्टीन एंड फोर्टीन शेयर एंड दिस ग्राफ शोज द नाइनटीन सेवेंटी सेवन टू सेवेंटी एट और टू थाउजेंड सेवनटीन और एटीन शेयर ऑफ सेक्टर्स इन द एम्प्लॉयमेंट नाउ वाई आर मोस्ट ऑफ पीपल एम्प्लॉयड ग्राफ टू शोज दैट परसेंटेज शेयर ऑफ थ्री सेक्टर्स इन जी टी पी नाउ यू कैन डायरेक्टली सी द चेंजिंग इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ सेक्टर्स ओवर द फोर्टी ईयर्स नाउ नेक्स्ट एज ए रिजल्ट मोर देन हाफ ऑफ द वर्कर्स इन द कंट्री आर वर्किंग इन द प्राइमरी सेक्टर मेनली इन द एग्रीकल्चर प्रोड्यूसिंग ओनली अबाउट वन सिक्स वन सिक्स ऑफ जी टी पी In contrast to this, secondary and tertiary sector produce the rest of the produce, whereas they employ less half, less about half the people. Does this mean that workers in the agriculture are not producing as much as they could? Now, what it means that there are three, uh, there are more people in agriculture. There are more people in uh, agriculture than. is necessary so even if you move a few people out production will to not be affected in other words we can say that workers in the agriculture sectors are un um, underemployed for example take the case of a small farmer lakshmi owning about 2 hectares of unirrigated land depended only on the rain growing crops like jowar and ahar all five members of her family work in the plot throughout the year why they have now where else to go for work you will see that everyone is working none remains idle but in actual fact their labor effort gets divided each one is doing some work but no one is fully employed this is the situations of under employment because they are working in their own field they are, they are not working anywhere they are they earn money which is divided into five persons if one person is growing crops and other person other four persons are working outside place then they earn money that will be called employment but when they are all family members are working in the same field they only do labor efforts that is coming under the situation of under employment because <coughs> people are apparently working but all of them are made to work less than their potential this kind of this kind of under employment is hidden in the contrast to someone who does not have a job is clearly visible as unemployed it is also called dis disused unemployment it is also known as disused unemployment it's very very important now suppose a landlord sukh ram comes hire one or two members of family to work on his field 
Lakshmi's family is now able to earn some extra income through wages. Because you do not uh, need five people to look after that small plot, two people moving out does not affect the production on their farm. In the above example, two people may move to work in a factory. Once again, the earning of family would increase. They would also continue to produce as much from their land. There are lakhs of farmers like Lakshmi in India. This means even if we remove a lot of people from agriculture sector and provide them with proper work elsewhere, agriculture production will not suffer. The incomes of the people who take up other work would increase the total family income. This underemployment can also happen in other sectors. For example, there are thousands of uh, casual workers in the service sectors in urban areas who search for daily employment. They are employed as a painters, plumbers, they repair, uh, repair persons, other doing old jobs. Many of them don't find uh, work every day. Similarly, we see other people who are uh, uh, of uh, service uh, sectors uh, on the street pushing a cart uh, selling something uh, where they may spend the whole day but earn very little income they are doing this work because they do not have any better opportunity now how to create more employment how to create more employment from above discussion, we can see that there continues to be considered underemployment in agriculture. There are also people who are not employed in all. In what ways we uh, can one increase employment for people? Let us look at the some of them. Take the case of Lakshmi. With her two hectare of plot of unirrigated land, the government can spend some money or banks can provide a loan to construct a well for her family to irrigate the land. Lakshmi will then be able to irrigate her land and take a second crop, wheat, during the Ravi uh, season. Let us suppose that one hectare of wheat can provide employment to people for 50 days, including sowing, watering and fertilizer. Applications and harvesting. Total takes the 50 days. So two more members of their family can be employed in uh, her own field. Now suppose a new dam is constructed and canals are dug to irrigate many such farms. See, this could lead to a lot of employment degeneration within the agriculture sector itself and it reduces the problem of under employment. Now suppose Lakshmi and other farmers produce much more than before. They would also need to sell some of this and for this, they may require to transport their products to a nearby towns. If government invest some money in transportation, storage of crops, or makes better rural roads to so that mini trucks reach everywhere, several farmers like Lakshmi, who now have access to water, can continue to grow, sell these crops. This activity can provide productive employment to not just farmers but also others such as those in services like transport or trade. Lakshmi's need is not confined to water alone. To cultivate the land, she also needs seeds, fertilizers, agriculture equipment, uh, pump sets to draw the water and being a poor farmer, she cannot afford all these things. She will have to borrow money from the money lender and pay high rate. High rate, in, uh, rate of interest. If local bank, they gives us her credit at a reasonable rate of interest, she will able to buy all these things in a time and they she can cultivate uh, her land. That means uh, uh, she uh, that along with the water, we also need to provide some cheap agriculture credit to the farmers for farming to improve. We will look at the some of these needs in chapter three, money and credit. Now, 
नेक्स्ट पॉइंट इज we must realize that some of the suggestion discussed above would take a long time to implement for short term we need some quick measures the recognizing the central government in india made a law implementing the right to work right to work in about 625 districts in india it is called mahatma gandhi national rural employment m g n r e g a 2005 this is very important question mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act under this act the central government in india made a law implementing right to work in 625 districts called mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act 2005 and which is known as mgnreja 2005 under this act in rural areas all those who are able to and who are in a need of work they are granted 100 days of employment in a year by the government if the government fails in its duty to provide employment it will give unemployment allowances to the people now difference between organized and unorganized sectors division of sectors as a organized and unorganized she is kanta and she is uh, he is kamal kanta works in an office she attends her office from 9:30 to 5:30 pm she gets her salary regularly at the end of every month in addition to the salary she also gets provident fund as per rules laid down by the government she also gets medical and other allowances kanta does not go to office on sundays and this is a paid holiday when she joined work she was given an appointment letter stating all the terms and condition of work he is kamal kamal is uh, kanta's neighbor he is a daily wage laborer in a nearby grocery shop he goes to the shop uh, at 7:30 in the morning and works till 8 pm in uh, evening he gets no other allowances apart from the, his wages he is not paid for the days he does not work he has therefore no leave paid holidays nor was he given any formal letter saying that he has been employed in the shop he can be asked to leave any time by his employer do you see differences in the conditions of work between kanta and kamal kanta works in a organized sector organized sector covers those enterprises places of work where terms of employment are regular and therefore people have assured work they are registered by the government and have to follow the rules and regulation which given in various laws such as factories act minimum wages act payment of gratuity act shops and establishment act etc is called the organized because it has some formal processes procedures some of these people may not be employed anyone but may work on their own but they do to have to register themselves with the government and follow the rules and regulation workers in organized sectors enjoy the security enjoy the security of employment they are expected to work only a fixed number of hours if they work more they have to pay overtime by the employer they also get several other benefits from employers what are these benefits they get paid leave payment during holidays provident fund gratuity they are supposed to get medical benefits under the laws factory manager has to ensure facilities like drinking water safe working uh, working environment safe working environment when they retire these workers get pensions also but on the other side in unorganized sector in which kamal works 
he does not get all these things because it is a unorganized sector government cannot control this sector these are rules there are no rules and regulations and uh, jobs here are low paid often not regular there is no provision of overtime no paid leave holidays leave to sickness employment is not secure people can ask to, to leave without any reason when there is a less work such as during same some season some people may be asked to leave a lot of also a uh, lot also depends on the whims of the employer and this sector include large number of people who are employed on their own doing small jobs uh, such as selling on the street uh, doing repair work uh, similar farmers work on their own and hire laborers as and when they require so we can say that organized sectors are registered by government have to follow its rules regulation while unorganized sectors are largely outside the control of the government workers in the organized sectors uh, they enjoy the security of uh, employment uh, while in unorganized sectors they uh, they have no security of job organized sectors uh, they are expected to work only a fixed number of hours uh, while in unorganized sector there is no uh, fixed time, number of hours of working um, they cannot get the overtime uh, uh, working uh, uh, extra uh, pay but in organized sector if they work uh, overtime they uh, they earn the money extra organized sector workers get paid leave uh, payment during the holidays from provident fund uh, gratuity medical benefits while on the other side in unorganized sector they cannot uh, earn these uh, benefits for example organized sectors are government uh, employees banks while uh, uh, organized unorganized sectors are home tutors persons working in the small general stores now next point is classification of economic activities into sectors on the basis of who owns assets and is responsible for the delivery of services sectors in terms of ownership public and private sectors activities can be classified in two categories private sector public sector private sectors are those sectors in which uh, government uh, um, government owns most of the assets and provides all the services for example a railway or post office public sectors are those sectors uh, in which ownership of assets and uh, delivery of services uh, is in the hands of private individuals uh, or companies uh, for example tata iron steel company limited or alliance industry limited companies in public sector government own most of the assets government owns most of the assets and provide all the services in private sectors ownership of assets and delivery of services in the hands of private individuals or companies railways or post of railway or post office in an example of public sector whereas companies like tata iron steel company limited alliance industries limited are privately owned activities in the private sectors are guided by motivate to earn profits to get such services we have to pay money to these individuals and companies the purpose of public sector is not just to earn profits governments raise money through the taxes other ways to meet expenses on the services which are provided by it and modern day jo uh, governments spends on the whole uh, range of activities what are these activities why do governments spend on such activities there are several things needed by society as a whole but which the private sector will not provide at a reasonable cost If you like my video please like and share my channel for next videos thank you